Hello there guys and welcome to Mad Dog Minis. In this video I'm going to be making true scale or Primaris sized Mark IV Space Marines using the Mark IV Space Marines kit and the Intercessor kit and mashing them together. Now my Marines are going to be Loyalist Sons of Horus Space Marines who have repainted their armour in the original Legion colours of the Lunar Walls in defiance of the treachery and betrayal of Horus. Now the Mark IV Space Marine kit heavily heavily influenced the Primaris aesthetic as you can see here the helmet design is very similar although not exactly the same so I am going to use those original helmets on the Mark IV they're a bit more angular a bit more aggressive looking I'm certainly going to use the torso components and all the components that I can from this kit to make it work and stay as close to the Horus Heresy era as I can whilst giving these guys some extra height and uh, bulk so what you're going to need for this is the kind of bottom half of an intercessor. So you don't need the front plate, the torso section there, that can go away. But you want the kind of groin and back plate section and you'll need the corresponding legs and the greave armour that goes with those legs. Just make sure you've got your component numbers are correct on this because of course they aren't completely modular. Uh, they are essentially monopose kind of kits. You'll also need the top half of a Mark IV. So the front and back torso, the shoulder pauldrons with as many of those kind of knobbly um, molecular bonding stud uh, ones as you can get hold of. You'll need the um, head, the Mark IV helmet and the uh, backpack. And you'll also need the weapon arms and of course the weapons. You can use Primaris arms and weapons if you wish but I'm sticking to the Mark IVs. You'll also need on top of that a real buttload of storage. Pouches, grenades, knives, uh, you know, holsters, anything you can get your hands on because you'll need that later on to kind of put around the waist as you'll see with the conversion uh, takes shape. Now first of all just glue the Primaris legs together exactly as they're meant to go. So no conversion work here at all. Just make sure as I said you've got the correct component numbers and just put it together as it's supposed to and uh, get it glued down on the base as early as possible so you've got a nice solid foundation to work with. Uh, that Good time as well to put the Greave armour on so you don't have to fiddle around with that later on. Consider using plastic cement rather than super glue which is what I'm using. You need to chop off the back back torso section now just using some hobby snips that goes in the bin because you don't need that at all and then you're left with just the legs you need to get some milliput or green stuff or something similar mash that together into a pea-sized sphere um, which you'll need to kind of put on top of the legs so you squish that down in kind of you mold it into I guess like a gumdrop shape and I my advice would be to use slightly less than I've used in this image because you'll see in a minute we get a lot of excess going on um, but kind of mold that down until you're kind of happy with that kind of gumdrop uh, kind of shape there and uh, then you'll need to prepare the two halves of the Mark IV torso just glue them together exactly as they're supposed to go and we're going to create a little bit of room just at the front just in front of that kind of gum drop that you've made above the belt buckle because we can actually get a little bit of glue and plastic to plastic contact here just where my fingernail is the armored plate on the bottom of the torso will slot down onto that on top of it so a little bit of glue and that just adds a little bit of a reinforcing uh, you know uh, fix to the uh, to the conversion so just bring that down carefully and try and get some glue and plastic contact there once again plastic cement would probably be the better thing to use look at that muffin top coming out the side see hasn't done a workout in a while this guy so we need to clear that away using a sculpting tool or something similar and just kind of shave off the bits you don't need and then pat the rest down just try and create a nice smooth seal it doesn't need to look good but it does need to be quite sturdy because that's what's going to hold your marine together just wet the tool in some water and squish it down a little bit and mash it down and you'll be hiding that later on so a little bit of a scale a check here is looking good against a primaris uh, assault intercessor which is the scale I'm after so uh, it's a good time to check this because you can change it at this stage um, it's not too hard to kind of backtrack so the arms are going on now. I'm using Mark IV arms. The scale doesn't bother me here. It may bother you, in which case I'd use Primaris arms and weapons if it really kind of bugs you. Uh, but that all goes on exactly as it's supposed to. No conversion work there. This is just me putting a, a Mark IV Marine together. So I've skimmed over the footage because there really is not too much to see here. Uh, shoulder pauldrons go on as they're supposed to. Head goes on as it's supposed to. And of course, the power pack goes on as it's supposed to as well. You may wish to use a Primaris backpack the slightly bigger but I'm sticking to the Mark IV backpack uh, for my Marines. 
So next we use super glue and we definitely, definitely use super glue for this bit, not plastic cement because we're gluing over the uh, milliput and you're just putting all those pouches and grenades and stuff that you put to one side earlier on. They're going all the way around the waist to kind of hide that unsightly stretched thin waist because it just doesn't look right if you leave it like that. Um, so this is going to bulk the marine out, make it look a little bit more imposing, a little bit more menacing and just hide the kind of the ugliness of the milliput um, underneath. Well worth doing and it makes the whole conversion just work I think. So uh, use a little bit of ne needle nose pliers if you need to get the smaller components on. That's what I do with the grenades and things like that. And look at that, looking pretty good at this stage. So we're ready for painting and we're going to undercoat him in Corax white. Bam, there we go, that was quick, wasn't it? So over the top of that, we're gonna put some weathering. I'm using some Mornfang Brown. What I want is the original Sons of Horse Green to show through where the paint has chipped. So I'm using Mornfang Brown as a starter for this and going in all the areas where I think the armor might wear. Pay attention to the kind of edges of the grease and the right uh, knee pad because you'll be kneeling down shooting on that. And uh, then I get that Sons of Horse Green in the center and leaving a little bit of brown around the edges. And that's gonna, for me, represent that paint the white paint that's chipped away to show the uh, sons of horus paint underneath just an important part of the narrative for me personally although it does kind of look and could pass as just normal corroded armor to be honest with the green and the brown so the original Lunar Wolves Legion iconography um, is represented as this, which is a white wolf's head and a white crescent moon on the left. And you can see the picture of the Legionnaire there as well. However, it wasn't always like this. It used to be quite different. It used to look like this. And this is the version that's going to offer my inspiration. So I prefer the Legion symbol. And I'm going to replicate that closely, but not exactly, as you'll see later in the footage. And I'm certainly taking inspiration from the colours on the Legionnaire as well. So I'm going to use this Space Wolves transfer sheet that is not in production anymore but you can get them quite cheaply on eBay. There's lots of them floating around. I'm going to use these little wolf heads that look similar to the Legion symbol for the Lunar Wolves and I'm just going to use some Microsol and Microset just to kind of get that transfer down on the left pauldron. Now I'm putting it on the left pauldron. I don't know what the Horus Heresy kind of rules are with iconography but I'm sticking to convention on mine so it's going on the left side the chapter symbol and uh, <laughs> there's no other reason than I want to go on that side so it kind of fits in with my other marines and that but uh, if you want to know how to do this microsol and microset stuff i have done a video on it so i'll put it a uh, link to it in the uh, description in case you're interested so i kind of while that dries go onto the pouches with some mornfang brown uh, one coat wonder that paint love it love it love it and then a little bit of lead belcher on the grenades and on uh, various other bits like the knives and things like that i'm keeping the color palette quite limited because i want quite a monochrome look to this uh, uh, as as was in that original index Astartes um, imagery. Um, now I'm kind of going and painting the bolters in uh, Black Templar, which is definitely my go-to for painting weapons now. It's awesome, awesome paint. I love the way it looks when it kind of uh, goes on, so that's great. Um, next, we're going to move on to that chapter symbol again. I'm going to use a sharp pencil just to etch in a crescent moon underneath. So we're going slightly lower down than in that original iconography. And my wife said this ends up looking like a, a wolf's head eating a banana, which is just oh, fucking hell. I'm, I'm, all, I'm always going to see that now. <laughs> <laughs> so never mind but that's what i came up with in for a penny in for a pound so i'm not i'm not backtracking now guys so i get that down with pencil first nice and delicately and then go over it with a, a fine brush and some abaddon black just to kind of black line it and make it look a bit bolder and fit it in a bit better so this is kind of what i came up with not perfect by at all by any means but good enough for me mediocre painter and all that you know so i'm going to go in and do the eyes a little bit of mephiston red and uh, we're going to just do my normal thing for the eyes really i'm going to put a dollop of uh, troll slayer orange just in the front and middle of the lens afterwards to add a little bit of a glow effect as well steady hand required here but worth taking some time over the eye lenses because they do catch the eye <laughs> if you, no pun intended but um, we're also going to add in a little bit of a uh, white scar like a tiny tiny dot of white scar just in the corner to add that illusion of a, a shining eye lens so well worth the effort if you take the time here definitely looks makes uh, makes the miniatures look better uh, so here we're just putting on some more uh, bolt gun metals, some lead belcher just onto the bolter and onto the uh, onto the backpack in various locations to make it look a bit uh, more realistic 
uh, just kind of picking and choosing pipes and vents and things like that. And uh, then we're going to go and kind of, I guess, make the, the paint job the, where, where it's worn away. And I've done the Sons of Forest Green. I'm just making that look a little bit more realistic by adding some white flakes of paint in here and there using a very, very light grey paint, not white, I should add as well. Uh, so I'm going to throw a wash all over the miniature here. Watered down null oil is what I went for, although I did come back in off screen and darken it down a little bit because once it dried, it didn't look quite right. It looks really good in this original kind of uh, footage here, as you can see, but it doesn't end up looking like that when it's dried. So I do come in and darken them off afterwards. So they, they end up really, really grim dark, which is definitely my style uh, at the end of the video, as you'll see. So coming in and painting the bases with some dark brown now, um, and uh, I just for your information as well off screen I use Luke's APS uh, base ready range to do the bases as well a bit of our bad and black on selected areas uh, just the trim and bits on the uh, backpack and the uh, and the leg kind of armor guards as well I use a Tonekeeper's transfer sheet to add some black transfers to the right shoulder guards on the guys who don't have the studded shoulder shoulder pads. Um, this may not be accurate to the Horus Heresy. I don't know what the, the kind of markings should be or anything really, but I don't care. As long as something's down on there, I'm happy. It just breaks up a plain area. Uh, I also, after this, uh, tidy up some of the kind of other colours on the miniature. The sergeant gets some red on the crest and on the loincloth. The plasma gunner gets some athematic blue on the uh, on the plasma coils. Um, so that's just kind of adding in the extra colours. Now, thank you ever so much to all my subscribers. Really appreciate it, guys. Consider liking and sharing if you've enjoyed the content. And if you're not already subscribed, consider giving me a sub. It all helps the channel to grow. So let's uh, throw up some glamour shots and see what you guys think.